Today we're going to create the glitch effect in Photoshop with both an image and text as well as how to put them together to get this really awesome glitch effect. So let's get into Photoshop and get started. Hello friend, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com and this is the photo that we'll be working with today. Now you have two options to start your glitch effect with. You can either start with black and white or you can have an image with color. It doesn't really matter and in this case I'm going to keep the color in the photo. However, if you would like to have a black and white image, you'll start things off by selecting your image layer and then going up to image down here to adjustments and over here to desaturate. That will make your photo black and white and get you started on the right foot from the very beginning. Anyways, like I said, I want to have mine in color. So I'm just going to leave my image as is. Now the first step that we need to do is create our glitch effect and we can do that using our layer styles. Although there are other ways of doing this, this is the method that I like using for the glitch effect because I just find it the easiest. First, you'll need to duplicate your layer one time. Then to open your layer styles, just double click on your layer and that will reveal the layer style panel. Within the blending options, which will be the first thing that opens here, we're going to uncheck the G for green and uncheck the B for blue. So now we only have the red channel enabled. Clicking OK, nothing will seem to happen on our photo. However, once we grab our move tool by pressing V and then move that layer over just a little, notice how we now have that red glitch over on our image. And that's because only the red channel is visible on this new layer. So to take this one step further, we can now add other color channels to our glitch to customize the effect. So we'll once again, duplicate our image layer, just pressing Command or Control J one more time. Now double clicking on our new image layer, once again, to open layer styles. Now let's go and check the blue color channel and uncheck the red color channel. Click OK. So if you leave it in the same spot, you'll get a more purple color. However, you can grab your move tool once again by pressing V and you can move this over to the other side to get like this blue 3D or retro 3D look. If you remember those like old 3D glasses that I used to have as a kid at least. And now we have two different colors in our glitch. Now let's add one more just to finalize the effect. Pressing Command or Control J to duplicate that one more time. Double click to open layer styles. This time we'll click the G option, unclick the blue. So now we only have the green green channel visible, grab the move tool by pressing V, and now we can position this where we'd like to customize the effect. Now to make life easy, I'm just gonna rename all of my individual layers to the specific color channel that is enabled. You don't have to do this, but it makes life easy in my brain at least. The beauty of having all of these different channels on different layers like we have here, is you can go and move them as needed to customize the look. So for example, I could grab the blue color channel layer, grab my move tool, and then just adjust this over to totally change the look of my glitch effect. There's no right or wrong with this, so it just takes a little bit of customization until you find something that you are happy with the look of. I'm gonna move my blue channel in just a little bit more here like so and now I have that like purple and teal look that I think I'm the biggest fan of for this one. So now the first step in the process is complete. We've added the color glitch to the photo. Now we need to go and basically create slices of our image to move around as if it's like glitching out essentially. To do that, we need to duplicate and merge all of our layers onto one layer. So I'll shift click all of my layers and press command or control G to group them. I'll call this two base. So that means I can go back and adjust anything if needed. From there, with my base group selected, I'll press Command or Control J and then Command or Control E to merge that group onto one layer. Now with that new merged layer selected, we'll grab the marquee tool by pressing M on our keyboard. We wanna make sure that we have the rectangular marquee tool selected and not the elliptical marquee tool. Now in the options bar, make sure that your feather is set to zero pixels, otherwise this effect won't work exactly as you hope for. Anyways, with that merge layer selected, we're going to click and drag out little selections to basically manually glitch our photo. For example, I'll click and drag out like this. Now I'll hold the command or control key and then click and drag within that selection to cut it and move it over. Now I can click and drag out in another location, hold the command or control key, click and drag over to glitch it out. And you can see how this begins to work just holding command or control once again, making new selections over and over to kind of like reposition different edges in the photo and make it look like it's actually glitching out, I suppose. So you can do this as many times as you want, wherever you would like. And I would recommend to do a variety of like thinner and wider glitches because I think that gives the best result, but you can do whatever works for you. Now I'm just going to skip ahead here because I'm just repeating the exact same steps over and over. So I'll meet you again once all of my glitches are finished here. 
Now, one thing that I find useful when adding this part of the glitch effect is to not go over any of the key features of a subject's face, like the eyes or the mouth. I feel like that sometimes messes up the effect a little bit and becomes distracting. So you wanna to add to the subject without completely distorting their face, I think. So anyways, that's my personal preference. Um, you do with that as you please. Now that we have this first glitch effect complete, we need to go and add our second part, which is using a wave distortion. Now, really quickly, before we get onto this next step, if you're enjoying the tutorial so far, make sure to hit that like button down below to let me know. To start, we need to add a few marquee selections to define where we want to add this wave distortion. Again, I wouldn't suggest doing this over anything like the mouth, nose, or eyes of your subject because you'll get some weird results. So with that same layer selected as before in my rectangular marquee tool active, I'm going to select a few different areas on my subject while avoiding the key areas of their face. By holding the shift key, you can continue to add to your marquee selection. So you'll have a few different selection areas active at once. Now that I have all of my marquee selections active, we're going to go and add the distortion by going to filter, distort, and then to wave. Now in the option windows that appears, you're gonna to wanna to use the exact same settings that you see here. And I'm gonna write them on the screen right now so that you can pause the video, copy them down, and put those onto your photo. I just find that this works best for images. We'll have a different one when we work with text. Once all this is good to go, click okay. Notice how it now adds this sort of like wavy, pixelated, distorted look and different parts of the image that we had selected. Now we can press Command or Control D to deselect that, and now we have this sort of neat looking effect. Now to take this one step further, let's add some lines to this photo using a sketch filter. To make this sketch filter blend really nicely with our glitch, we're gonna add it onto a new layer. So creating a new layer, then setting our foreground color to white, then press Alt or Option and Delete to fill that new layer with white. I'm gonna call this layer two lines glitch. With the lines glitch layer selected, we'll go up to filter and then filter gallery. We'll then go to the sketch adjustment, click on the half tone pattern, make sure that our pattern type is set to line, and we'll set the contrast to 50 and our size to five. Then we'll click okay. This will give us this straight line look that covers our photo, but to blend it in, we can just use any of our blending modes or our layer blending modes. So with our lines glitch layer selected, we can either set this to darken multiply, overlay, or soft light, depending on the look that you're going for. I like the look of soft light since it sort of gives this like retro TV vibe at the same time, but the only problem is that it's often a little bit too overwhelming. So I can go to my fill slider and just drag that down a bit to decrease the intensity of that so it becomes a little more subtle on the image. Around 25% looks good for this particular photo, but it will vary depending on the image and the colors in your photo as well. So that completes the glitch effect on an image, but I would like to add some glitched text to the background of this photo too. So I'm gonna show you how to quickly create glitch text in Photoshop as well, but we're gonna run through the process a little bit faster because the process is very similar to this one, except with a couple key differences. Grouping these layers, just to keep things organized, I'll call this to final glitch. Now I'll go and create my new text layer. By grabbing my type tool, pressing T, clicking on my image, and I'll call this to glitch. Press the check mark to commit to that, and I'll grab my move tool and just scale up this text so it kind of fits behind my subject or, or covers the canvas, I suppose. Once again, just like before, we're going to use our layer styles and add a red, green, and blue channel to our glitch. By first duplicating our glitch layer, double clicking on that, going to our layer styles, blending options, uncheck the green and the blue so we only have the red channel visible, click OK, grab our move tool by pressing V, move that over as needed to wherever you would like, then duplicate that layer one more time, double click on that, grab the blue channel, uncheck the red channel, click OK, grab your move tool by pressing V, move it wherever you would like, duplicate it one more time, double click on that layer, select the green color channel, uncheck the blue color channel, click OK, grab the move tool, move it over one more time to wherever you would like here, and then rename your layers accordingly so that you know what each of those channels are. I told you we were gonna go through this one a little bit quicker here. From there, you can adjust any of your color channels as needed to change the look that you end up with. Once you're happy with the positioning of the color channels behind your text, you're gonna shift click all of them, press Command or Control G, and call this to base text. Now we'll duplicate and merge that text group by pressing Command or Control J, and then Command or Control E. Now we have a rasterized version of that text, meaning it can no longer be edited, but now we can add our glitch slices once again, just like before. So with that layer selected, grabbing our marquee tool by pressing M on the keyboard, we can click and drag out over an area we would like to glitch, hold Command or Control, and then just reposition that as needed. Do a variety of glitch effects 
to suit the style that you're going for. I'd recommend doing a variety of different sizes and locations for the glitch effect, just like before to kind of customize the look of everything. But since you already know how to do this, because it's the exact same process as before, I'm gonna just skip ahead so that we can move on to the next step. Once you're on your final selection, just press Command or Control D to deselect that. And you can either have this text effect here or you can turn off your base text group and then you'll have like these gaps and things. So this is a slightly different look depending on what you're going for. In this case, I'm gonna leave that base text layer turned on and I'll keep it as is. Now from there, it's time to add our wave effects just like we did before. Once again, grabbing your marquee tool and then selecting a few different areas that you would like that wave glitch to apply to. Again, holding the shift key, to add to your selection area. With your selection active, we'll go up to filter and down here to distort and wave. Now the settings in the wave distortion is gonna be a little bit different. I'll again, write them here on the screen so you can pause the video, write them down and apply them onto your text. But once everything is looking exactly as you see here with those settings applied, just click okay. Then you can press command or control D to deselect that. So that just adds this like static look to your photo if you would like. In this case, I don't really want this on my particular glitch effect. So I'm gonna press command or control Z to undo that. And so this is the text that we'll be applying behind the subject. So now that our glitch effect on the text is completed, I wanna add it behind my subject to sort of just complete this project a little bit more. Before we do anything, we need to first group our text layers into one group because we need to apply a layer mask to it. So shift clicking my base text group and my new merged layer, press command or control G to group that and just call this to text. Now I need to create a selection of my subject by opening my base layers, clicking on my background layer, which is the unedited version of my subject. Then I'll grab my quick selection tool by pressing W and then press select subject to create a quick selection of my subject without much work involved. From there, I'm gonna to go to my text group and I'm going to click the layer mask icon to apply that selection onto a layer mask. Now, obviously this is the opposite of what I want. So I'm going to press command or control I with that layer mask selected to put it behind my subject. Now you'll notice that the lines that are on the photo are not applying to our text. And that's because our lines glitch effect layer is below our text. So I'm gonna grab my text group and move it beneath the lines glitch. Now to make it blend in a little bit more, we're gonna use the blend if sliders. So double clicking on my text group layer, we're gonna to go to the underlying layer slider of the blend if option, and we're gonna drag down the highlights like so. And notice how I get further and further over, the text becomes less and less visible around the glitch. Now, if you just keep dragging this, the effect will look a little bit hard and harsh. So we need to feather it out. To do that, basically move this slider until you start to see some changes in the text. Then hold Alt or Option, click on the highlight slider of the underlying layer, and then move this over to feather things out a bit. Once you're happy with that general feather, I'm going to move the other slider over a little bit as well. And now we have the text more nicely blended into the photo. From there, you can adjust the opacity or the fill of your text as you would like, just to finalize everything a little bit more. If you would like to scale your text and reposition it, all you have to do is unlink the layer mask from the group by clicking on the link icon there. Now you can grab your move tool by pressing V and you can scale your text independently from your subject. So then that way you can get it positioned in a slightly better area that works for your particular project. For this photo, I'll put it right up at the top of the canvas like so, and that completes the glitch effect. So now you know how to create the glitch effect in Photoshop on both images and text. And if you have another Photoshop effect that you would love me to make a tutorial about, let me know down in the comments below and I will definitely check those out. Anyways, my name is Brendan from bewillcreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.